राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री 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 राम जय राम जय जय राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओ श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम 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 ओ श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम
जय जय राम ओ श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओ श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओ श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओ 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 श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम मिले श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओ 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 श्री राम जय राम जय राम ओ श्री राम जय राम जय 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 जय राम ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओम राम जय राम जय जय राम ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय 
राम ओम श्री राम जे रा जे जे राम श्री राम जे राम जे जे श्री राम जे राम जे जे राम ओम श्री राम जे राम जे जे राम ओम श्री राम जे राम जे जे राम ओम श्री राम जे रा जे जे राम ओम श्री राम जे राम जे जे राम ओम श्री राम जे राम जे जे राम ओम श्री राम जे राम जे जे राम ओम मजे राम जे जे राम ओम श्री राम जे राम जे जे राम ओम श्री राम जे राम जे जे राम ओम श्री राम जे राम जे जे ओम श्री राम जे राम जे जे राम ओम श्री राम जे राम राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओ ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम हरिओम टू एवरीबडी प्रणाम 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 यस again when email has come even if a person is without a name won't he feel the doership in what way this is going to help us because we we have a name and form we are thinking about a person who is not having a name and form just imagine in what way it will help us because we are only supposing you know we are thinking about somebody else. so why not we think about our progress our journey what are the problems we are facing that we will try to solve it even the way very look at another person gives us that we are seeing the person as body how to bring and see the divine presence in him other than seeing his virtues it is not possible unless we go to the source of ours and realize that we are not what we assume ourselves to be 
we will not be able to see it in others. It is not the knowledge that makes us to see others. It is the experience of our inner content. So by sadhana, we are trying to have the taste of the presence of the Almighty. And then when we, as we get stabilized, the moment we look at any object or person, we will slowly try to see that element in. Now, having read or having heard, suppose we want to see divinity in everybody, it cannot be. For two hours, two years or more than two years, Papa has been struggling with the chanting and simultaneously meditating upon this indwelling and all-pervading reality. That is why he was able to see as Ram. We, are, we have only read, we have only heard. So we have to experience, then only we will be able to see the divinity in everybody. This knowledge will help us to very little extent. So that is why Puja Mataji always hammers this. You don't go and start teaching others because you have to first experience the presence of the Lord within. Then only it has got the authenticity. So each sadhaka has to chalk out a way by which he or she can proceed towards what? Proceed towards what? Towards the realization of the presence of the Atman within us. Second question, concern for others. Is it just feeling sympathized in the first stage? But by feeling sorry, we can be useful. Can you explain more? Care and con concern for others is another, uh, what do you call it? Another synonym of our experiencing this presence of God. We don't see the otherness in them. Now on certain occasions we all do that. In front of us, if somebody is likely to slip or fall, or if we see a, some water or something there, and somebody is coming without looking down, you will immediately warn, you know, be careful, you will slip. It automatically is it's not because of any thought product. So purity of the mind will definitely express itself in the form of concern for others. These are some indications. Me to we. Me to me will only bother about mine. Me to we will definitely bother about the concern for others. Ultimately, now we are all doing it. We may be doing it at certain, certain occasions. That stage we have all reached. But how to make it permanent? At particular moment, we have become one. That is why we immediately rush up to him. And immediately after that, we become separate. So that means we have not identified the common denominator, common factor in us. So our Ram Nam chanting, our Swadhyay, our everything should ultimately lead us to feel the presence of Atman within us, God within us. There is no shortcut. If that is difficult, we can place a deity there and see the deity in everybody. Either of these. The Atman is an abstract expression. So if we, our mind is not in a position to concentrate on this abstract, we can give the form of a deity or a guru and try to see him in there and gradually transcending it.
Papa was concentrating on the Nirguna Nirakara aspect. He could do it. We may not be able to do that straight away. In Bhagavad Gita itself, he says, you know, Klesho Diyadi, in chapter number 12, it is difficult to concentrate on an abstract form. Klesho Adhigataras Tesham, Avyakta Sakta Chetasam, Avyakta Hi Gadir Dukham, Dehavad Dhirapyapyadi. Adhigari is, for Adhigari it is Kleshagaram. He says, the deserving ones are called, what do, what do we mean by Adhigari? They are those who have the sense under perfect control. Those who have managed to achieve moderation in everything. Those who have been constantly doing Upasana, meditating on God in some form. And the mind is already even pointed and pure. Such a person realizes the self the moment he hears the teaching, Tattvamasi, you are that, you are the self. In the preparatory state itself, Adhigaris have purified the body and mind to the extent that they can receive the higher wisdom. Of course, it is not the body or the mind that receives it, but a body or mind that is not refined could disturb the listening. The mind constantly blabbers, keeping up a flow of murmuring about thoughts, actions and emotions. You have done that, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have that urge. When all these clamors are quietened, the seeker easily recognizes the self-effulgent reality within. As long as there is this body identification, as long as we consider ourselves the body, ignorance is present. It indicates that one has not yet heard the teaching that could give an insight, I am not the body. What kind of meditation is possible in such a state? Nowadays, lots of people claim that they practice meditation. That is more likely mental torpor and not real meditation. Real meditation is that which is backed by the knowledge of the self, Atman. At least there must be the basic knowledge that we are not the body. Without even this level of understanding, how can one enter the portal of truth? We will not attain it by merely getting attached to the concept of the unmanifest avyakram. Some dry intellectuals pride themselves as followers of Vedanta, but have not completed the necessary purifying practices of Upasana, Bhakti or Guru Seva. They are doomed to fall, fail in the quest of the self within. Such persons tend to speak ill of the practices that purify the mind. So for the they are avyakta sakta chetasa. They are simply enamored about the unmanifest, about which they are clueless. For them, surely, it is immensely difficult. Clay show. So that is why in Bhagavad Gita himself he says later, Yo yo yam yam tanur bhaktiya. In whatever way you approach me, I will come to you in that form. So the two things we have now. First thing, uh, we will not be able to see the common factor just by hearing it. It is purely by our doing sadhana. Keeping Always hammering this, you know, I am not what I assume myself to be. He is there in me. Okay, instead of telling I am that, we can say he is there in me. Without him, I don't exist. So I should realize his presence. And then come back. And lead as an individual. 
if this is the, when the moment we realize we have been promised that this common factor has been experienced by us the common factor that is in us and everybody is experienced by us then only we will be able to see the see them as the forms of divinity until such time we know they are we know we are but it is still at the knowledge level initially it will be at this knowledge level the guru says you are not what you assume yourself to be we believe that words shastra says you are not that we believe that then we keep on doing our sadhana so we should be very clear my only uh, sadhana is to somehow feel his presence within me my ram naam should enable me my bhajan should enable me by my uh, satsang should enable me reading of the shastra should enable me nothing else puja should enable me my visit to temple should enable me my working as a householder should help uh, should help me my work as a, a professional man my work as a social being all these things should help me to feel the presence comprehensive spirituality uh and that's the puja swami ji used to mention like this many sad many mahatma have said but in our case we remember his words there is no there, there should be no separation between our sadhana and daily life everything that we do is a sadhana to realize him including when we are now talking that means we are not defining sadhana to a particular form of activity every thought every word every deed that comes out of me it should be a sadhana that means god oriented we have not reached the stage but we keep on trying this alone will purify our outer action god is in god inside is watching me he is testing me he has given me a family life professional life social life what do i talk what do i think what do i do he is watching the moment we know he is watching everything has become sadhana that mean we will we will be within that boundary no we will not go out of that boundary when water is scattered going in a scattered way when we make a channel canal it is bound by the two sides water will not go anywhere similarly in all our activities suppose we develop this attitude this could be one of the methods one of the methods of transforming all our actions as into sadhana is to feel that he is watching from within so immediately suppose we slip or we forget we immediately look at him sorry when papa keeps on repeating this you know the constant remembrance constant remembrance what does it mean constantly remembering that he is watching us so only by this method of remembering him we have been told that we will be able to see the common factor in everybody because he or she is not confined to this body he she or it whatever we call it that the common factor is in everybody in everything so the first question is even if a person is without a name to address won't he feel the doership uh that question can be answered but it do not help us much 
early morning we have shared this early morning you go for a walk alone you happen to see a tree you stop there look at the tree and you realize that there was an existence but somebody labeled it as tree so even before the labeling was done that existence was there so we will try to find out what that existence is without label what happens then each one let us experience mahatmas who have done this they have expressed that the sense of individuality will not be there to express because the label makes me aware of my sense of individuality so when we cross the boundary of label it is mere existence sat at the moment we need not break our head on this because we should try it is not an academic process so early morning when you start walking you see any anything that is a gift by mother nature there is a label pasted on it you remove that label what do you feel that will give us the answer for the first one whether we will feel the doership or not even the very look at another person gives us that we are seeing the person as body how to bring and see the divine presence in him other than seeing his virtues there is no shortcut that is why papa emphatically emphasizes that we should go to the source of our and the world because that is the common denominator common factor when he says bijam mam sarva bhutanam it covers everything i am the eternal seed of everything we can stop all our reading to concentrate on this to somehow realize this we have only read from the shloka we have understood or assimilated the theme little but we have not experienced so we have to try this the moment we try this the common factor is realized from the words of papa and other mahatmas we learn that the moment we 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 experience the presence of him in us we will be able to feel the presence of him everywhere until such time it is only a knowledge not an experience concern for others it is is it just feeling sympathy no for the state but by feeling sorry can we really be useful to him all these things are at the intellectual level when you are actually on the spot how does how do you de- how do you react people who have been associating with ashram and mahatma they will definitely feel the concern for others automatic suppose the prasad is distributed for example when your turn comes the quantity becomes reduced again one person comes for prasad you will immediately share what you have you know nobody need tell you you don't have to learn bhagavad gita for that it is it is it is spontaneous
you feel for others. I I feel happy when I get prasad. So he, he even if he is late, you know, he should not feel unhappy. When you are traveling in the bus, you find somebody is finding difficult to walk. Uh, sorry, to st to to stand. Immediately you get up and offer him the seat. These are all spontaneous. If you are weak, probably you may not get get up. Suppose a lady in the advanced pregnancy stage when she comes and you are sitting, nobody need to give you any lecture. You will automatically get up. You would have seen many such incidents. But we must see that incident. God is facilitating us to see that incident, that it becomes a spontaneous react, reaction from you, not out of knowledge. So we come to come back to this by touching and kindling these two aspects. It becomes more and more clear that what we have to do is to feel His presence inside. That is our hope. That is the purpose for which we took up this inquest of God in depth study. We are taking up this Bhagavad Gita in depth study. We should be very clear. We are we are not here to master the uh, Bhagavad Gita. Just like we, we we did not take up inquest of God to master its literary content. We are trying to somehow see the Ram in everybody. Just like Papa saw Ram in everybody, that, mystery, that uh, subtle and mysterious power in everybody, our aim is to see the Ram in him. Similarly, in Bhagavad Gita, he says, you know, Bijam Mam Sarva Bhutanam. We are trying to see that Bijam. Is it becoming clear? Another devotee has written in Malayalam, in quest of God in chapter number 6, when Papa was uh, lying down, the Sadhu Ram touched his uh, unknowingly feet on Papa's body, so the other man immediately, you know, uh, he got upset, but Papa said, he is also a form of God. Just now we have discussed, you know. So he was able to see the common factor. We were not able to see the common factor, we were only seeing him as a separate one. This is the difference. To Papa it is alright, because he has reached the stage where this source has been identified. So according to this devotee, ideal of the ashram put forward by Papa, universal love and service based upon a vision of divinity in all beings and creatures. This is exactly what Samatvam Yoga Muchade. In second chapter, 48 slogas, he says, Samatvam Yoga Muchade, equanimity is yoga. That means if you are in a position to feel the presence of Him, after we see after we experience the presence of Him, we will be able to see the presence of Him in everywhere. And that is the Samatvam. Then only we will be able to have the Samatvam. 
and uh, IQG chapter 29 in jungle in Narahari Mandir. So that he, that according to him, in chapter number 5, 18, Vidya, Vinaya Sampanne, Brahmane, Gavihastini, Shunijayiva, Shubhageta, Pandita, Samadarshina. That is every, in everybody, whether it's a dog or a cow or an elephant or a Brahmin or a Chandal, he was able to, one will be able to have the equal, equal vision. How that equal vision come? Only when we realize his presence within. He did not say only in men, Sarva Bhutanam. In all creation, for all creations, I am the. There is one more sloga, you know, Sarva Chara Chara. What is that? Forgotten. One more sloga is there, no? There are eight slogas. Yachavi Sarva Bhutanam Bijam Tadaham Arjuna Na Tadasti Vina Isyad Maya Bhutam Charajaram. I am the generating seed of all living beings. No creature, moving or non moving, can exist without me. So, Vidya, Vinaya, Sampanne, Brahman, all these things, you know, if, if we have to understand, we should somehow try to understand the source of ours and then the world. So then, the next point he has pointed in, in our day to day life. The most, uh, normally we take it, the saddest event is the death of somebody who is close to us. So, in second uh, chapter, Shloka 17 and 20, the Lord explains, Avinashidu 17 and Avinashitu tadviddi yena sarvam idam tadam vinasham avyavasthyasya na kaschit kartrum arhati. That means if we try to identify the source of that, which is deathless and which is in me. And the next one is andavanta ime deha nitya syokta sharirina. Anashinu aprame asya tasma tibhyasva bharata. So, uh, when death comes only to the perishables, whereas we are to feel the presence of the imperishable in us. Najayade mriyade va kadajine. Nayam Bhutva Bhavida Vanabhuyaha Ajo Nitya Shashwat Oyam Purano Nahanyate Hanyam Ane Sharire So when we are trying to understand the uh, but sorry when we are trying to feel the presence of the Almighty within us these are all the uh, attributes this does not undergo uh, birth, death it is Nityan Shashwat and Puranan even when the body is slain, nothing happens to that. So this is what he returns. That means the more and more we get clarity of the attributes of the indwelling reality, it might help us. What is perishable, what is imperishable, if we keep on knowing it, 
probably that will lead us to the imperishable. And if you are unable to do that, again in 27, chapter number 27 in second chapter, he says, Jadasya hi dhruvo mrityur, dhruvam janma mrtasya cha, tasmad avarihar arte natvam shojitu marhasi. Whatever is born, it will, it will die. Even if we understand that, we will not, also not bother about death. Wherever there is a death, wherever there is a birth, there should be a death. Whether it is today or tomorrow, that is the only difference. So he says, when you know that, everything that everybody, the other day we were reading our uh, Haridas Giri Swami, you know, he says, my, my grandfather, I know my grandfathers have gone, grandparents have gone, my father has gone, mother has gone, so one day I will also go. And when they go, when nobody, they, they could take nobody, nothing with them. So when I go, I will also not be able to take anything with me, nobody will come to me. So Krishna, at the time of death, you are the only one which is, so you should come to me and take me. Extend your hand of support and take me. Like that in so many ways, you know. Then he has quoted one more sloka, 28. Avyakta dini budani vyakta madhyani bharata avyakta nidhana neva tatraka paridevana. So you see, uh, to be, those who don't believe in any Purojanmas, you know, it has come from some, somewhere. We don't know where it, it has come from. And when we die, we don't know where we go. And in between, we find it is Vyaktam. Then what is there for us to grieve over? Practical. Anyway, coming back to our original point, that uh, the, today's, uh, all these doubts, in the form of various doubts, in the way, form of various observations, the Lord is making us to concentrate upon this particular aspect, that ours is to realize His presence within and then without. First within and then without. All our sadhana should zero to this. We should be very, very clear about this. That is why he is prompting uh, through so many of the devotees' minds uh, to bring out this. You are reading, okay, you have done this, you have done that, okay, everything is okay. But are you clear about the goal to be scaled? What is the goal to be scaled? Fearing the presence of him who is within us. Who is making us to feel that we are the existence, the feeling of being, accepting that we try to understand everything. That is the Maya. Accepting this, the feeling of being, you know. Nobody need to tell us that I am there, that we know that beingness. But accepting this, we are trying to master everything. It is only a, a there is an experience there. Which cannot be explained. So today, uh, Papa is bent upon pointing out this. All our Sadhya is Ramnam, Bhajan, Satsang, Everything should ultimately enable us to realize His presence within. He is there already, we have not realized His presence. He is there already in the form of beingness. He is there already in the form of awareness. But accepting that, we are trying to master everything. So He is now slowly turning our direction toward this. Because if, if that beingness is not there, I am not there. 
the sense of individuality exists only because of that sense of beingness but the sense of individuality unknowingly does not look at that side and concentrate on everything other than this even under the banner of spirituality or spiritual discipline so today he is making it very very clear through all these doubts he is there now and here so now we pray to him we are absolutely clear about this clear in understanding now why don't you give make us the experience of your being as within us this intense prayer intense yearning intense aspiration is what is highlighted through so many observation through many shlokas today he made us to dwell upon according to because we have not experienced that stage we have to be content with what mahatmas and shastras says first of all why not we try to shift atman from the body then only we will know that there is atman no so we have a fair idea now that atman is there inside in the form of life in the form of intelligence in the form of awareness so when the body drops we have been told that the life life is given by god the body mind intellect is given by because according to our karma so when that karma is worked out body gets dropped there is no individual atman there the body gets dropped just like in a in a space we construct different rooms different buildings but the space is never cut so when we demolish a building or a when a when a building gets ah uh, some yes, earthquake or something comes then actually the space does not get affected so there is there is no uh, 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 drawing room space and uh, uh, kitchen space and uh, my uh, portico space and others portico space others uh, kitchen space other there is nothing like that only the body mind intellect is is the one which which is separate and it gets dropped as soon as the karmic wrangle finishes its job again we get then again shastra says the deep our mind does not become pure if we carry again vasanas again the life force finds a suitable yoni and then place itself there just like how we were born now i was there in the form of a seed in my mother's womb that seed belongs to god bijam man sarva bhutana and my body my intellect which got developed after a few days or months it is according to the specification given based upon my previous karma then i develop it i function as an individual when the karmic circle is over body gets dropped again the atman remains same again i get into another one again i build a house in the open ground 
again I stay for some time, again it gets demolished. Yeah. This is comparison only when the form is there. Ah. There is no form. And the Atman has no form. Ah. Ah. So when for the sake of sake of identifying the individual, the Brahman, Brahman means all pervading. Okay. Uh, Atman is indwelling. Yes. Uh, so in order to enable us to understand this, they have put these two words, Atman and Brahman. That's all. Yes. So we try to bring this space in our mind. So that it becomes very clear to us. The, in ashram, there were so many old buildings. Old buildings had to be demolished. And new buildings came up. So that means, the space remained the same. After its use, after it became old, it gets demolished, modified. So similarly, he is all-pervading everywhere. He doesn't get... He doesn't become limited because he is in, in some body. So the body, mind, intellect, after its course dictated by the previous karma, when it is over, it gets dropped. When we view it like this, there is no question of this, this Atman and that Atman. Ah, that's the point. Ah. So, yeah. so that is why that is why we have been asked to try for this vasana kshaya. When we are totally free from vasanas, desires, attractions, aversions, when we are free from all these dvandas, prayers of opposites, there is no need for getting into this embodied self. That is, then we become one with the cosmic reality. This is what we have been told. Ah, so we, uh, this much is enough for us. So our try, our thing is, we are trying to purify our mind, trying to get rid of the vasanas. So desires, cravings, ambitions, vasanas, fixed notions, rights and wrongs, likes and dislikes, preferences, priorities. These are all some of the things that uh, make our mind impure. So when we get rid of this, there is no need for taking another path. This is what the Shastras say. So now we have, having got a birth now, our job is now to purify this equipment, instrument, then hand it over to him with a prayer, I don't want any more. Because a stage will come, there is a sloga there, Mamubetya Punar Janmam, Dukkaleya Mashashvatam. Because I have realized that this, this, this life is Ashashvatam and Dukkaleya. So, enough is enough. That stage will come. For that, you know, I should be free, totally free from all vasanas, all desires. What is the num, 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 name of that uh, number of the sloga? You remember? Mamu Vetya Bhavan Janma? Mamu Vetya. Huh? Huh? Google, if you put it, it comes. Mamu Vetya Bhavan Janma Dukkhaliya Mashashwata. Seven, seven, huh? Eight, huh? Eight, huh? Eight, huh? Eight, huh? Fifteen, huh? Sixteen, huh? Fifteen, huh? Mamubetya Bunar Janmam Dukkale Mashashutam Napunuvanti Mahatmanam Samsiddin Paramam Gataha. Having attained me, the great souls are no longer subject to rebirth in the impermanent abode of miseries, for they have attained the highest to perfection. You are clear, Arda? Mama. Mama. 8th cha chapter, 15th shloka. Ah. If we ask the Lord, why am I suffering? He will respond with the counter question, who is suffering? And when the answer I is given, Bhagavan will again ask, who is this I? The I within you, is it you or is it me? 
then if one probs within it will be found that there is no i only the lord that is thus it is the really the lord who is suffering suffering too is one of his games this state of recognition is freedom from suffering those who know this are great souls who have attained the highest perfection this is what bhagavan speaks of maam upetya by attaining me you will no more be subject to punarjanma by attaining me you will no more attain to punarjanma so i will, i should be free from the cycle of birth and death in badagovinda marso he says you know punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jadare chayanam ഇക സംസാരെ ബഹു ദുസ്താരെ കൃപയ പാരെ പാവി മുരാരെ ഇനഫ് ഇസ് ഇനഫ് ആ എഗെയിൻ ബർത്ത് എഗെയിൻ ഡെത്ത് എഗെയിൻ ഗെറ്റിംഗ് ഇൻ ടു മദേഴ്സ് ബോം ഒരുമേ പോലും കൃപയ പാരെ പാഹി മുരാരെ വൈ ഡോ ഡു പ്ലീസ് ടേക്ക് മീ ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി സാംസാരിക് ബോണ്ടേജ് ദി സ്റ്റേജ് വി ഷുഡ് റീച്ച് വി ഹാവ് നോട്ട് റീച്ച് ദ സ്റ്റേജ് ആ വി ആർ സ്റ്റിൽ സാറ്റിസ്ഫൈഡ് വിത്ത് ദിസ് So we are praying to him when this is the reality why are you making me to crave for so many things which are impermanent enable me to get out of this at time i get some vairagya but after a few moments i lose that vairagya when somebody dies when i join the obsequies i i, I learn about uh, death is common i will also die all those things immediately after one or two hours or one one day i am back to square one as if i will i will not die i keep on planning desiring well, so many things so the constant hammering on these will definitely make us aware but we should not forget our ultimate aim is not to understand all these things understanding the presence of him who is making me to feel that i am Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om. And in Vivek Chudamani, the repetition will be there, Vivek Chudamani, open. in each one of us there is an individual self and the eternal self swami ranganathan ji beautifully brings it out no complication in each one of us there is an individual self and the eternal self the individual self is the i and the eternal self is the witness of this i I know that I am talking. I know that I am hearing. Two eyes are there, na? No? I know that I am eating. I know that I am seeing. I know that I am hearing. So there is a two eye. The individual self is the I and the eternal self is the witness of this I. When we use the word I, our finger points towards our body. actually it implies a profound reality hidden inside our psychophysical system in the absolute sense it refers to the reality that witnesses the i that is the eternal self but in our deluded state i is understood as the individual self so this pronoun i has a profound meaning when we are dealing with men and matters this will not strike to us but when we are calm and quiet you know when we sit i am sitting wait 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 i know that i am sitting who knows and who is sitting you know i know that i am talking wait who is knowing and who is talking i know that i am reading 
So at in a past moment, suppose we try to understand this, this explanation becomes clear. What is the explanation? In each one of us, there is an individual self and an eternal self. The individual self is the I, eternal self is the witness of this I. When we use the word I, our finger pointed toward the body. Actually, it implies a profound reality hidden inside our psychophysical system. In the absolute sense, it refers to the reality that witnesses the I. That is the eternal self. Today we started with that, you know, the eternal self within me. I have to feel its presence. Accepting that, I am trying to understand everything. But in our deluded state, I is misunderstood as the individual self. So there is an individual self as the eternal self. These are the appearing self and the real self. There is the I, there is one who witnesses the I. This I, you know, in, in Upanishad, there is a story of two birds, you know. So here he says, the I is in mundane affairs, that is this self, this individual self, eating sweet and bitter fruits. Every time it receives a severe blow, it looks up at the one who is witnessing in silent majesty and moves up a little, aspiring to become like that. In this way, it goes on moving until one day it realizes that it is one with the witnessing self and that it never existed separately. What existed was the supreme witnessing self alone. The little I was only a reflection of the witnessing self. Anyway, these are all food for thoughts. It might help us. When we are in a pause moment, we can see that. And later on, we can slowly extend it to our our active life also. When you hear a music, when you hear a music or a bhajan, bhajan, immediately try to bring in. I know that I am hearing. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Who knows and who is hearing? You no. Know? So there are two selves there. There is a hearing self and the witnessing self. Eating self, witnessing self. Seeing self witnessing self, smelling se self, witnessing self, thinking self, witnessing self, like that. So he is there, he is there in us, who is witnessing everything. That is why we were, to, we, were, we were motivated to say that we should know that he is ever witnessing us. We should always keep on hammering this truth that He is ever watching over us. He is the witnessing Self. That is why in His 2003 write up, Puja Swamiji mentioned it as consciousness or awareness, this, this Sakshi. He is always there, He is always there, He is always there. Ah. So, this uh, witnessing self is the actual eh? uh, self. Eh? The witnessing self is the one that is interpreting everything, correct? Witnessing? Self eh? is interpreting eh? everything. Ah. Exactly. We actually, actually, no, no, sorry, sorry. Actually, what you say is right, but it, again, it may get, give some confusion to us. Witnessing self is witnessing the explanation. I mean, the witnessing self is a real self. Witness, the witnessing self. Witness, if it is a real self. Uh, witnessing self is the real self. Eternal self. Yeah. So, Eternal self. That is witnessing, that is witnessing the narration now. And if it is not there, I will not be able to Correct. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Exactly, you are right. I I don't though I don't recognize him, 
only in his presence i am there the two birds you know this is the relative self the 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 present self but he is there witnessing self so in vivek chudamani it is beautifully brought out so god is there you can put god and then if suppose we are used to certain forms so he is the witnessing one so we feel now having made us to go through these thoughts we will try to develop a, an abhyasa that means even while chanting he is witnessing that is why papa said in dhyana we take to mental chanting and slowly the witness consciousness emerges and that witness conscious witness consciousness is the realization of the atman yes in fruition of life we have brought it under this uh, meditation you take to um, mental chanting and then a stage comes when all other uh, thoughts get settled only the chanting goes on then slowly we become aware of the witness consciousness so even now the witness consciousness is there but we are unaware of it because the other self the me self me self is covering it now the me self is trying to understand that there is a witness there is a witness in me i is the me self and this i is uh, the other one is the witnessing self that is why in all of our shloka sarvadi sakshi bhutam brahmanandam paramasugadam kevalam jnanamurtim dandvaatitam gagana sadrsham tattvamasya adiraksham ekam nityam vimalamachalam sarvadi sakshi bhutam bhavaatitam trigunarehitam sadgurum tam namami sakshi 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 hmm. Ah. Ah. While chanting. Ah. At the lip level. While chanting at the lip level. Lip level. Lip level. Ah. It then stops. But chanting goes on. Chanting goes on. Mind is also. Ah. Ah. From where I don't know. Ah. But the chanting goes on. Let us try. You know. Let us try when the chanting is going on. Knowingly chant. we try to hear our own chanting that could be the only method by which this witness consciousness can be presence of the witness consciousness can be felt But otherwise the mind will keep on going and will not concentrate on the witness conscious so if we have to become conscious of the witness consciousness we concentrate on one thought that is nama chanting to the exclusion of all other thoughts and then suddenly without any effort we become aware of the witness conscious so let us all try let us have these two in our mind first is god is ever watching us as witness consciousness the moment i become unaware of it i function as an individual the moment i become aware of it i i become his das his chela i will be all my thoughts words and deeds will be will be within its bound think about it na let us don't worry about anything we let us always think that he is watching us watching us watching us watching us which is the truth So, if Lord Krishna is our deity, Krishna is watching us. If Shirdi Baba is our deity, Baba is watching us. So, whenever I forget about this, I act from the me self, the I self. 
whenever i become aware of it then there is no problem i become his chela his instrument for all practical purposes i am acting i am thinking i am talking but i know that he is making me to do it that is why uh, papa gives lot of importance for this bhakti attitude where the bhakta and the bhagavan no the witness consciousness is the bhagavan and me is the bhakta so let us try this method from small small whenever we are busy we may not be our mind is not used to it so whenever we are free whenever we are uh, past, having past moments whenever whenever and wherever it is convenient we will try this method become uh, becoming aware of the witness consciousness bhagwan okay, okay. acha tomorrow uh, is the last day the after tomorrow we will be leaving ashram on for nearly one and a half months it takes we go to bombay on 20th stay there for 3 days on 24th papa willing we may go to london stay there for a week and from there we go to us uh throughout the month of june papa has prompted so many devotees to organize programs in six or seven places so after that again we come back to london stay there for a week and then to reach back here by the 15th of 15 16th of july so we all pray and we all request you to pray for uh, the successful conduct of this yatra god has given us swami ji who is coming with you swami ji uh sundar sundar you know puna sundar puna ha ah. he was a, he was in us till 2000 2001 or 2 then he came back and joined we set and then afterwards now he is leading a grihastha life in pune so he is accompanying us he handles things nicely he handles everything ah he handles everything even satsang you know he will be handling it so the uh, this is a rough plan so we all pray, <coughs> pray for blessings of you all mm. okay okay then hello hello tomorrow also we will have one session hello om shri ram jai ram jai jai ram om shri ram jai ram jai jai ram om
प्रणाम 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 नमस्कार नमस्कार प्रणाम 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 Thank you. 